What's up guys? Today we're going to solve problem 4 from dailycodingproblem.com. Good morning. Here's your coding interview problem for today. This problem was asked by Stripe. Given an array of integers, find the first missing positive integer in linear time and constant space. In other words, find the lowest positive integer that does not exist in the array. The array can contain duplicates and negative numbers as well. For example, the input 3, 4, negative 1, 1 should give 2. The input 1, 2, 0 should give 3. You can modify the input array in place. Let's read this question and make sure we understand it. So we need to find the lowest positive integer that does not exist in the array. Well, the lowest positive integer that exists anywhere in the universe is 1. 0 is not a positive integer. So if 1 is not in the array we're looking at, we need to return 1. In this example here, 1 does exist. Well, the next lowest positive integer is 2. 2 is not in this array, so we return 2. In this example here, we have 1 and 2. 3 is not here, so we would return 3, since that's the next lowest positive integer. Now, this seems really easy, but if so, why is dailycodingproblem.com telling us this is hard? Well, it's because of this condition right here. We're given a constraint that we must do this in linear time and constant space. Well, how the heck can we do that? The solution I'm going to show you is the one that's actually provided by dailycodingproblem.com. So if you were to subscribe and pay for the solutions, this would be the one that you get. But I'm going to go ahead and show it to you right now. So we know that our answer or our return value must be between 1 and n plus 1, n being the length of the array. So let's make a note of that, and then I'll talk about why that is. So the return value must be between 1 and n plus 1. Why is that? Well, let's just look at an example real quick. If the array we're given is 1, 2, 3, 4, then n, or the length of the array, is 4. And in this example here, the lowest positive integer that does not exist is the number 5. So we would return 5, which is n plus 1. Say instead of 3, we had 9 here. We would return 3, of course. That's the lowest positive integer that does not exist. So that's between 1 and n plus 1. And that would be the same if we had 5, 6, 7 in this array. We would just return 1 because that's the lowest positive integer that doesn't exist. So anything we return will be between 1 and n plus 1. All right, I think that's easy enough to understand. But how can we do that? The way we're going to do this is we're going to iterate over our array and we're going to place each value in its matching index. So the value 3 we would want to put as the third value in the array. And remember we're going to modify this array in place. So we would want to put 3 here. We would want to put the value 4 as the fourth value in the array. So we would put it right here. And we would want to put the value 1 at, you guessed it, the first value in the array. So each one of the corresponding indexes for these values is simply going to be the value itself minus 1. So the corresponding index for this would be 2, since in Java we start off with 0. So in the array 0, 1, 2, this would represent the third value, and that's where we would want to put the value of 3. For negative 1, we don't really care where it goes. We just want to put the values that are between 1 and n plus 1 in their corresponding indexes. When we iterate over this, we're just going to ignore anything that's less than 0 or greater than n. So let's start making some notes for that. So we first want to iterate over the array. So we'll just say for 0 to n, we'll iterate over the array. Next, we want to place each value in its matching index. So place each value in its matching index. And we are going to ignore values that are less than 0 and greater than n. Alright, 
So let's go ahead and start coding this up. I think this is going to be enough of for, for us to go off of here. And as always, when we code this and we, um, we go through it, uh, I'm going to walk through an example step by step so we can see how this actually works. All right. And we'll give ourselves a constructor. Need class there, and we will give our solution its own method. Call it solution, real original. All right, so let's create the variables we'll use here. We'll just create an array, and we'll use the same values given to us in the example. And to test this, we will make a call to our solution method. and see if the return value is what we expect it to be. We'll pass in the array. All right, so let's do this. We need to iterate from zero to n. So using a simple for loop, we'll accomplish that. Okay, next we want to place each value in its matching index. We're right here in our notes. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is the, uh, this is the meat of our program here. All right, off to a bad start with that while loop. Okay, so we'll use a while loop for this. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that the uh, the value we're looking at is um, is greater than zero and less than n. All right. We'll say less than or equal to because it can be equal to the length. Next, we want to place the values at their matching index. So if it already is at its matching index, we're going to ignore it. So the way we do this is we say array at array of i, and then remember it's minus one here, while it's not equal to the value at array i. So let's, let's look at what that means. So, um, Array at i minus one is just going to be where we need to place the value. This is its corresponding index where we need to place it. Just look at this for an example. The first array of i would be this value right here, three. So what we would do is we would look at array of i, which is three, minus one. So this is the index two. And this is index two within the array. So index two is zero, one, two, right here. We want to see if that's equal to 3. If it's already equal to 3, we don't need to do anything because we've got the value in its, in its correct place. If it's uh, not, then we need to go ahead and swap it, which is what we'll do right now. So we'll just use a standard swap process here. And we will first go ahead and store the value we're going to overwrite. And we give extra space here just so hopefully it makes it more readable. And then we will go ahead and place this value where it needs to go. So in that uh, in that index, we need to go ahead and place array at i. Okay, and then we will place the temp value into array at i. And that way we can uh, continue. We can continue through the while loop until we have the correct value at the correct index. All right. So at this point, we are going to have once this terminates, we will have each value that exists at the correct index. 
And we're going to walk through what that's going to look like here in a minute. But before we are, um, before we're done with this method, we need to go ahead and iterate through the array with the values in the correct places one more time. And this time what we're going to do, we'll just say if array at i is not equal to i plus 1, and we will just return i plus 1. Because here, if, say, at the first value here, so i is 0, so if the very first value in the array is not equal to i plus 1, which is just going to be 1, then we need to go ahead and return 1. Because if 1 were in the array, this is where it would be stored after this loop right here. Now, if we go through the entire array and we never get to this point here, then we just need to return n plus 1, which is consistent with what we said up here, that the return value must be between 1 and n plus 1 from our notes. And I don't have anything stored as n, so we'll do this as array. Yep. All right, so let's walk through this and just see how this is going to work. And to do it, I'm going to paste our array values right here so we can see it uh, as we're walking through. Hopefully that will, uh, that will make this easier to understand. And right here, we're going to keep track of what our, our array is after each iteration. So the first thing we're going to do is look at value 3. Is value 3, which is array at i, greater than 0 and less than array.length? Well, yes, it is. Length is 4. So this meets that, that, those conditions. So is the value at array i minus 1, which is index 2, which is right here in the array, is it equal to 3? No, it is not. So what we do is we store that value, which is negative 1 right here. We store that value in temp. And then we go ahead and place 3 at its corresponding index right here. So array of i is 3. We place it at index 2 within the array. All right, and then we place array of i, which is negative 1. Uh, we, we store uh, that right here, that array of i. So what that's going to look like after this is negative 1, 4, 3, 1. That is what our array, how our array will be ordered after this first iteration. Because all we're doing is we're swapping negative 1 and 3 on that first one. Okay, now we're looking at negative 1. So is negative 1 greater than 0? No, it is not. So we don't even need to bother with it. So next we move on to 4. Is 4 greater than 0? Yes. So is 4 less than or equal to array length? Yes, it is. Because array length is 4. Now we look at the value at where the, um, at the index where 4 should go. So array of i is 4, minus 1 is 3. So what's at index 3, which is right here? It's the value of 1. Well, that's not what we want there. We want the value of 4 there. So we go ahead and we go through this, which essentially just swaps 4 and 1. So during the, or after the second iteration of our array, it will be ordered as such. So we will have 1 where it needs to go. I'm sorry, no we won't. We'll have negative 1 there. We'll have 1 there. We'll have 3, and we'll have 4, where it needs to go. Now, array of i is 1, all right? So is 1 greater than 0? Yes. Is it less than array length? Yes. Now, what is the value at array of index 0? Well, it's negative 1, so that does not match the value of 1 here. So we go ahead and we swap those two values right here. So the next iteration of our array will be ordered as so. Remember, we just swap these two values here. So it will go like negative 1, 3, then 4. All right. And this is what we want. Each value is at its corresponding index if it exists. 1 is where it needs to go. 3 is where it needs to go. 4 is where it needs to go. It doesn't even matter that negative 1 is here. All that matters is that the value right here is not 2. So when we get down to here and we iterate through it again, 
we're going to look at the first value, which is one, and we'll say, so if it's not equal to i plus one, well, it is equal to i plus one, so we need to go on to the next one. The next one will be negative one. Is that equal to i plus one, which is two on that second iteration? Well, no, it's not, so we need to just go ahead and return two. That will give us what we need. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. And before I do that, let's print out the array. Let's print out the array at each iteration just so we can see if it matches with what we've got here. So we expect it to print out something like this each time. First, it's going to be this, this, then this. All right, it's going to be in this order. It should print out the arrays that we, as we have them ordered right here. And then we will print out our solution here, which should just be the value of two in this case. So let's test this and see if it works. All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, we get our solution of two, which is what we expect. And you can see in what gets printed out here, we have negative one, four, three, one. Well, here we anticipate negative one, four, three, one. Here we have negative one, one, three, four, negative one, one, three, four. Then finally one, negative one, three, four, one, negative one, three, four. So this works as we expect it to. And this satisfies the conditions laid out for us in the problem statement. So we are good to go. Uh, we could just test this second example they give us and make sure we get three with it. So in this example we're using, we should get the value of three. And we do. And what's interesting about, about uh, this one is that we never make it into this while loop at all. We never get into this because we don't need to. If you look at it, the first value is zero. So forget these, these are no longer the values. So we're looking at one, let's just, just walk through that real quick. Won't take that long. So we're looking at the value of one. Is one greater than zero? Yes. Is it less than array length? Yes. Now we're looking at the uh, at index of array of i, which is one minus one, which is zero. So the value at array of index zero is one. Is that equal to array at i? Well, yeah, it is. It's equal to one. So we don't need to go into this while loop at all. The same thing happens when we look at value two. And then when we get to value zero, it is not greater than zero. So we never go into this while loop. And that's not a problem. Then we just come down here. We check to see if the first value equals one, it does. Does the second value equal two? Yes, it does. Does the third value equal three? No, it doesn't. Third value is zero. So we would simply return i plus one, which would be three. Okay, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'm gonna do problem number five next. See you guys then.